Hi, I'm Kira Newton, Master RKC, here with Doug Pirinelli at Rise Above Strength. We just finished teaching an RKC certification, and I wanted to share with you two of the most common mistakes that we see. We did see this this weekend, and so it's a perfect time to show you what we have to share. Uh, the first thing is a deadlift. So when you have somebody starting a deadlift, typically you're going to start them on a lower weight, or you're going to start yourself with a lower weight. But the problem with a lower weight in a taller person or a person who doesn't have a lot of strength is that they're going to try to get to the lower weight, which is uh, away from the body. So if he steps up and he's deadlifting, they try to get down, but they're compensating. So the low back will start to round, the hamstrings will start to tighten, the knees are going to shift forward, and he's just got all these things happening. So let go and stand up. So what he's trying to do is get so low that everything starts to crumble underneath this structure. The easiest thing you can do without raising him into a higher weight is just to raise the floor. So we've taken free weights. You could use an apple box, you could use a two by four, and just simply take the floor up. So I'm going to place the, the lower weight kettlebell on the weights. And from here, I hope to give him the freedom in the hamstring and the hip mobility, or just the freedom of not having to go so low with the strength, so that as he comes back and shifts his weight towards his heels, his low back remains really flat and even contracts the lats are coming down. He's going to squeeze the kettlebell off of the floor, and here we have a perfect deadlift position. So pulling back through the hips, long spine sitting back toward the heels. And again, returning, pulling back, the knees are staying back behind the shoelaces, and you're just going to grease the groove of the deadlift position here. Until they're ready to go high into a higher weight or they have the mobility and the flexibility to get a little bit lower. I do this with almost all of my clients. Good. And go ahead and bring it down. The next thing that we saw this weekend and that I often see with my clients and my students is a swing timing problem. So if you look at uh, Doug, I'm going to show you what, a, what bad timing basically looks like. So he's going to start his swing and release early in the hips. Here it's really pulling him forward toward the toes and making his timing very awkward and he's having to compensate greatly underneath this weight. Go ahead and stop. So basically I'll explain what happened. He's, he drove it up into the top of the thigh, which you're supposed to do. He shot the kettlebell forward with the hips. It floated up, but what happens here is he's releasing early. When you have an early release, it's going to drive you down, as I said before, toward the toes and drop the kettlebell underneath the knees. So what we want you to think about is hiking the kettlebell to the top of the thigh, punching the hips forward, letting it flow to the 90 degree or 7 shape, waiting here for the kettlebell to come back down. So gravity just takes it down. Hips are tight as you're contracted until you either touch the ribs or it passes the belly button. Once it has done that, you can release the hips and sit back and down. There, I'm really just set up for the perfect swing position to come right back out and repeat. So, I hope this is really helpful. Look at what he's going to be doing. Floating. Waiting for it to come back down and returning. There we have the swing timing is right on the game. Thank you so much for joining us today and I hope you enjoyed this.